everyone, exciting news. I have a major update for you guys for the aisle. I was uh, kind of antsy to get home from work today because they have posted a very in-depth and transparent roadmap that gives us insight in what's to come. So it all started with a post on Steam. I'm not going to go through the entire thing, but you can check out this message on Steam yourself if you want to see that. But it's just an announcement of how they took in the feedback in response to the previous roadmap map that they released, which uh, I also discussed on this channel. And they've implemented some changes. And what they've done this time for this roadmap is they are sharing it in Trello, which is an online... Um, sort of organizational platform that you use. Um, it's quite common for teams to use. So common, in fact, that my team at my job has also used this. And I know that some departments still do. So it was very interesting to see them choose this format for them to share their roadmap. But I think it's, it's great that they're sharing it like this. As I said, it's very transparent. As we're getting into, we're going to discuss what has been announced, what is coming. And it's very exciting to see all of this new stuff that we can expect. But it just, you know, they're explaining how the roadmap how the roadmap works. I'm so excited, I can't speak. <laughs> They're explaining how the roadmap works in case you're not familiar with Trello. And that's about it. So we're gonna hop over to this online platform. How it's organized, there are four cards currently update uh, five. The fifth card is to be announced, but they've organized it by update. So update number one, update number two, three, four, uh, pretty, pretty standard. And each card has a different, um, uh, well, we call them labels, but I'm not really sure how they call, how the, do they have a word for them? <laughs> uh, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> We're, we have images that lead to the specific information, but right now you can see before you glorious is an overview of what's to come. And oddly, the first one is right now the most exciting to me grouping system which is, as you can see in the flares over here, it is in development, it is a mechanic. Uh, we're all familiar with what grouping means, I don't need to get into that. Uh, but it's coming very soon, so that will make the game much more playable. You can see right here that they've checked off 7 of 12 items in order to complete this mechanic. And uh, that's indicated for every single one of these projects that they're currently working on. They've broken it down. We're mostly looking at dinosaurs right now, but they've also, uh, they have some mechanics sprinkled in. So next up is AI Uteraptor. Uh, 37 of 45 uh, of the items on the checklist done. And let's open it up so you can see what I mean. So they have a description here. I'm sorry that... Um, Everything else is in Dutch. Uh, that's not really helpful for you guys. But I will just briefly read this. As the epitome of cunning and ferocity, able to swiftly maneuver at high speeds and pounce upon unsuspecting victims, the Uteraptor has certainly earned its fierce, fearsome reputation. Whilst all Uteraptors are inherently dangerous, it's the ones you don't see that are truly clever. Uh, that's quite a description, so it sets the bar high for what the AI version of that is going to be. How intelligent is this AI really going to be? But that's coming to the game very soon. Uh, you after AI uh, to, uh, to hassle you during your gameplay. And you can see in this overview, uh, it's uh, organized by categories. And then every category has an item that they can check off once it's done and that's what i meant when i said it's very transparent they've broken everything down very openly and we can have a look into what has been done and what they are currently working on and you can even see below under activity you can see when something has been done so you can um you can actually uh, check up on the frequency of which they're working on something and even who has done it so that's very interesting um yeah, I kind of, I kind of applaud them for sharing it this way. It's, um, it gives us, it, I think it gives us the insight that we need in, uh, in this project, in the progress of this project. So next up is the uh, Tenontosaurus AI. I'm not going to read everything. I will link this uh, Trello below so you can check it out for yourself if you want to get in depth. But as you can see, also for this guy, a lot of work is already done. For example, they're right now. Um, 
Next up would be playtesting, uh, behavioral algorithm thresholds. I will not pretend to know what much of this means, but looking at it, this is uh, coming very close to completion. Uh, the only downside that I will note is that they're not giving an exact time frame. So, for example, for the Tenonsaurus, it says that 39 of 45 items are checked off, meaning done. So only six more to go, but we don't have any insight in how long those six will be. On one side, that's reasonable for a team to not want to make promises they can't keep. On the other hand, it makes it a little bit harder to guess when everything is coming. I'm assuming that update one is just going to be one big batch, so everything needs to be completed before update one is going to happen. Uh, the final thing in update one is dry source AI. So we're getting a lot of AI in the update number one, and I think that's really going to help gameplay in Avrima right now, uh, especially for the huge raptor. It's kind of difficult to get your food, especially since the servers are a little, you know, um, you can hear crickets in the background, tumbleweed rolling in. It's a little bit um, abandoned in favor of legacy at the moment. But I think uh, grouping and introducing AI is going to make a big help in terms of drawing people back to Avrima. Uh, moving on to update number two, where things arguably get more exciting, at least for most people, because we are introducing new dinosaurs. You can see it right here that it says not started. Um, they do, however, have nine out of 45 of the items checked, but I guess that's uh, an insignificant amount uh, words. Uh, that number is insignificant enough for them to consider it not started as opposed to in development. Uh, but what we have here at the very top is the Carnotaurus playable dinosaur. Uh, we are, let's look up the big image, right? the big image. There you go, beautiful. It looks very similar to the Carnotaurus that we all already know and love, our speedy boy with his little arms tucked back. <laughs> what's uh, what's that cartoon character that runs with his uh, hands back? I don't know. I'm, I'm talking nonsense right now. It's the excitement. Looking great. Um, stalk the planes as the terrifying Carnotaurus. The absolute nightmare of every small critter. As this ravenous mouth on legs blitzes across the island. Whilst it lacks maneuverability. <laughs> that's very familiar. It turns like a cruise ship. Of the nimble Uteraptor. It's insane speed and ability to knock others down. More than makes up for it. That's interesting. So we are finally going to be able to use those horns and ram some folk. Be sure to look left and right before crossing the street. I like that very much. Here you can see that um, they've, they've barely started work on it. There's still a lot of uh, work to be done. Uh, here, like locomotion, calls, eating. Now, if something is not checked, it doesn't mean they're not working on it. Um, or that smaller facets of this item uh, have not been completed. They explain that in the Steam post. Only when an item is fully completed will they check it off, obviously. So, yeah, a lot of work to be done. So, this is going to be taking a little bit longer. But we'll keep an eye on it and see how fast the progress actually is like right now uh it is at uh what was it nine out of 45 you know if tomorrow it's 15 out of 40 uh, that's not going to be the case but just to give an example then you have a little bit more insight in how quick these updates are coming so next is a dinosaur the name of which i am terrified to pronounce every single time i attempt it and i apologize in advance but it is Hypsilophodon? Hypsilophodon? I'm so sorry, folks. But it looks adorable. Let's just call him Eyebrows from henceforth. Um, looks absolutely beautiful. Feathered dinosaur, uh, which is very exciting. Uh, the feathers on the body look a little bit plastic, a little bit too laid down. Looks more like a, um, a 2D texture, which of course it is, than actual feathers. But let's not pick it apart right now. Let's just appreciate the positives. And it's adorable. Uh, the Hypsilophodon is a small herbivorous ornithician. Or oh god, that's another word I can't pronounce. Thanks. Thanks, world. Thanks, science. <laughs> that's built for life in the jungle. As well as being one of the more beautiful dinosaurs on the island. It also sports impressive jumping capabilities and speed to match. 
When that's not enough to keep safe, the Hipsy, thank you, can shoot out a stream of its acidic stomach contents, temporarily blinding its predators, allowing for an easy escape. Cover your eyes. So this is like the Dilophosaurus of, uh, of the Isle right now. We are temporarily blinding our our hunters. That's very nice that it's a small herbivore that can actually defend itself. Very cool. Um, yeah. Kiss and Kitten is uh, working on it very, very hard, very diligently. Uh, next up is everyone's, you know, everyone's favorite troll on the aisle. It's the Dryosaurus. Uh, <laughs> he looks kind of buff. He looks very proud. He looks ready to annoy some people. I like it very much. Um, I'm also, I, I'm a spoiler alert, I didn't see it in this roadmap, but I'm very much looking forward to the skin customization also being introduced to Avrima. You know me, I'm, I like pretty things, sue me. One of the island's most adorable inhabitants, the dry source, is famous for its agility, maneuverability, and small stature. A favorite snack amongst the carnivorous population, encouraging the dry source to hide itself away from what it can't outrun within the safety of its burrow. So burrowing is returning to the isle. Uh, as I understand it, that was one of the issues with the dry source in Legacy, which is why it had been um, sort of cast aside to Sandbox. Uh, but burring is returning, so that's nice. And at the bottom of update number two, my favorite dinosaur of all time in real life, that is. In development, Stegosaurus AI, but still, we're gonna be uh, admiring its beauty. So this is only AI, and I find it very interesting that they are, they are going quite large with AI and quite impressive. Right now in Legacy, we have the Ava, which is... Eh. Uh, so I... I have high hopes for AI. I hope you know that, uh, developers. There's a dog barking. There's no reason for that. I mean, I understand the urge to be excited and to express that, but please. Uh, the lumbering giant enjoys taking things nice and easy. That's surprising because, boy, is it moody in Jurassic World Evolution. It uses the threat of its massive size and impressive weaponry to ward off most would-be predators. Given its slow speed, it leans harder into fight than flight. Beware the tail. A well-aimed swing can be lethal. Although a fairly consistent sight on the plains, they can sometimes be found foraging on the outskirts of the jungle as well. Alright. Wait, I didn't see a full-size image. Full-size image, woman. There you go. Again, very similar to Stegosaurus from Legacy. Correct me if I'm wrong. I've never played the Stegosaurus. Have I never? No, that's not true. I'm a liar. Uh, I have played the Stegosaurus in Legacy, but only once, very briefly, and I, I believe it was dark. Um, so, ooh, my memory may be failing me, but I think it looks very similar. Very, very similar to uh, the Legacy version. So I'm not really sure what has been done in terms of updating the skins and the model and such. But, you know, comment down below if you, uh, if you can spot the difference. Uh, next up, update number three. Uh... Yeah, we're having some more dinosaurs, but first and foremost, the mechanic of fishing. Uh, I think this is something we're familiar with from Path of Titans right now, but, you know, your Piscivores will be able to hunt AI fish that will be present in the, uh, the, the water of the isle. But also, also what's going to be in the waters is the playable Dinosuchus. Now, this is a guy, um, I think everyone's been looking forward to this because it offers such a unique playing feature or a play style, I should say. Uh, what they say about the Dinosuchus, you'll have to, you'll have reason to fear the depths with the addition of aquatic predators prowling the waterways. Be sure to take the utmost care, else you may find yourself snatched up in the jaws of the terrifying Dinosuchus. And looks really cool. I can't wait to see this guy in comparison to like a T-Rex, you know, stuff like that. So you can really get a feel for the size. Because right now looking at this image, Lord am I talking fast. <laughs> right now looking at this image, you sort of, at least I, in my head, I scale it down to the size of a regular crocodile. That's not the case. It's a teeny tiny bit bigger. All right, let's uh, let's unpack the rest of this. Uh, more playable dinosaurs. We have the Pteranodon. Again, another dinosaur that provides a very different playstyle. Soar through the skies as one of the most majestic animals to inhabit the island. Whilst its fragile form is <laughs> terrible. 
Terrible in a fight, the Pteranodon is graced with the luxury of flight, allowing it to easily circumvent most threats. The Pteranodon's diet primarily consists of fish and scavenging from carcasses. Um, we have seen, though, in previous de developers' live streams that it takes a little bit of a uh, running start for the Pteranodon to fly away. It's not quite instant, so that will give the ground predators uh, some, uh, some chance there. Um, yeah, so that'll be interesting. I'm already picturing, uh, you know, people baiting the Pteranodon to come down to a carcass and then coming out of the uh, of the woodworks to uh, snatch them up. Some chicken wings. Oh, those those soulless eyes are kind of frightening me. But again, looking looking pretty cool. And this is going to be exciting to play as. Uh, next up. What I felt was a very surprising addition and also surprising implementation as we've discussed in the video for the previous ro roadmap. But we have the Bibiosaurus. I'm probably again mispronouncing that. I'm so sorry people explained it to me in the last video, but I'm forgetting it right now. Thank you, brain. This small Therizinosaurus enjoys the comfort and security of the water. And that's where the surprise comes in. That's... You know, my dinosaur knowledge is it's not up to snuff, but I address it in this I addressed this in the previous video and people were kind of agreeing with me. Like, yeah, that's not something that's um uh founded in the in the fossil record. But anyway, it's it's interesting. They're taking some creative leaps, I guess. Where it grazes on aquatic flora and the occasional fauna. It uses its massively clawed forelimbs to secure itself to secure itself on the rocks, to the rocks, uh, let's just start this over. <laughs> it uses its massively clawed forelimbs to secure itself to the rocks and riverbeds during strong currents as it grazes and searches for small prey. So they kind of came up with a story for why this Therizinosaur has such big claws. I admire it, but it's still odd to me. It's an odd choice. Though swift and sure in the water, on land they are much less adapt. But their impressive claws make them more than capable of putting on a fight for their small stature when they cannot find safety in the water. We all know the theory in uh, in Legacy is uh, is pretty fearsome. Ooh, look at those teeth! I also like the, um, the color on the throat. Looks very nice. Uh, again, the feathers uh, a little 2D, but those claws, man, those are really, really awesome. Moving on, last one for update number three, the Sukumimus. Uh Sukumimus is also in Legacy right now. Uh, he looks very familiar. I think, um, I think what it's called is a dewlap. It's the flap of skin under the underjaw uh, by the throat. Uh, it looks even more pronounced in this one, but other than that, it looks very similar to what we have, even in terms of the coloration. Uh, the Sukumimus finds itself in a unique spot in the ecosystem, able to traverse the land and thrive in the shallows, large and powerful enough to deter most other predators, whilst lacking the speed and stamina necessary to hunt most land-based creatures. This is very similar to what we have in Legacy, uh, in terms of how it fits into the ecosystem. Instead of relying primarily on a diet of fish, the perfect animal to deploy alongside the long-awaited fishing mechanic. Oh, uh, sorry. Instead of relying primarily to... <laughs> Instead relying primarily on a diet of fish, the perfect animal to deploy alongside the long-awaited fishing mechanic. So, yeah, their choices do make sense for why they've combined these playable creatures with the fishing mechanic. I'm ass Although I didn't read it... Oh no, the Pteranodon's diet primarily consists of fish and scavenging from carcasses. So yeah, we have the um, the four dinosaurs that you know will be um, you know will be will be interested in the waterfront, uh, accompanying the fishing mechanic. I'm quickly moving on to the fourth update, but please do comment your own reactions to this down below so we can continue the discussion in the comment section. But I really want to go through this entire 
Trello roadmap with you. So update number four, uh, it's the nesting mechanic. Again, this is uh, familiar from legacy. Male and female dinosaurs will be able to establish nests and incubate eggs. That's different from the all currently. Currently, oddly, it only takes a female to uh, create the nest, uh, incubate the eggs and poof, there is life. That's not really how it, how it works. It's not how it works. Um, so we are going to need our trusty mates to uh, fulfill this uh, this lifelong dream of creating a family uh, and watch them die. Um, <laughs> male and female dinosaurs will be able to establish nests and incubate eggs, which you can invite your friends to spawn onto as hatchlings, a perfect mechanic to deploy alongside the egg-snatching oviraptor. We don't need to look at this image. This uh, is already familiar, but the oviraptor that's where it's at. Look at it. I love the color scheme of this guy. It's so vibrant. <laughs> he is also very expressive in this picture. He's like, whoa. <laughs> oh god. No, I'm not gonna go off on a tangent. I want to keep this as short as possible. Uh, he looks great and I'm very excited to place this guy. It's going to be so funny trying to steal eggs from nests. It's going to be very annoying, but it's going to uh, give parents a reason to be afraid. Very afraid. One of the island's most colorful and infamous inhabitants, the Oviraptor earned itself the title of Egg Thief for good reason. Preferences aside, the Oviraptor is an omnivore, allowing it to choose from a diverse selection of food sources, granting it a distinct survival advantage. That is very interesting. If it's if it's truly an omnivore, we, you could also just choose to eat from the bushes, I'm guessing. Uh, I don't think there will be any limitation implemented in terms of that. So, you know, you can pick and choose. And finally, very interestingly, um, Tyrannosaurus AI. So not a playable Tyrannosaurus Rex. Unfortunately, I will say, I am looking forward to seeing the truly bigger carnivores in the game but first and foremost we're going to get the ai version uh looking at the model again it looks it looks very similar to uh the standard skin which is kind of weird because i've played with this skin that sounds so odd oh no don't don't repeat that sentence but yeah not really sure what i think the face is a little bit different um but that's just me spewing nonsense off the cuff. A true force of nature, one of the island's largest and most intimidating inhabitants, the undisputed king, yeah, because it needs a nerf. Come on, it's way too powerful. Anyway, um, rant aside, the Tyrannosaurus Rex steer clear of this formidable opponent should you seek to survive. Now, I do really wonder... How good is this AI going to be? Is it not just going to be wasted? Uh, wasted effort giving um, artificial intelligence to such a big dinosaur? Is it really going to be able to um, stalk the island as it is implied? Um, they, they boasted during one of the live streams, you know, how well a T-Rex can hide in the dense dense, way too dense forest of the Afrima map and then it can um, you know, lurch out when an unsuspecting dinosaur walks past, but is the AI going to be smart enough for that? Because right now the only carnivorous AI in the aisle is the Velociraptor and you know, for artificial intelligence, he's not particularly smart, he just walks up to you and you know either he bites you or he doesn't and he just stands between your legs you know awkwardly standing there it's just weird so <laughs> i'm very curious to see what they're going to do with the ai for this game so to sum up the mechanics coming grouping system praise be uh, thank you lord um the fishing mechanic and the nesting mechanic uh, also, what we have coming is Uteraptor AI, Tenontosaurus AI, Drysaurus AI, uh, and then later on we have Tyrannosaurus AI coming. In terms of playable dinosaurs, uh, first up the Carnotaurus, uh, Hypsilophodon, and Drysaurus. Oh, I forgot about the Stegosaurus AI. This video is a mess. <laughs> uh, then we have probably the most anticipated. It's not really a dinosaur, I know. Uh, the Dinosuchus, the Tyrannodon, uh, Bipiosaurus, and Suchomimus. Um, 
interestingly that they've moved the Dinosuchus to update number three, when you can t you can see it's at 18 of 45 items checked off the list. So it's more advanced in terms of progress than, say, the Carnotaurus. But it makes sense. They wanted to pair it with the fishing mechanic. And uh, the fishing mechanic is at zero of eight of the checklist items done. So that's why they're pushing it back. Although, you know, Dinosuchus, I'm not expecting it to live much off fish. Maybe just as a baby, though. Um, yeah, and then finally, as the playable dinosaur that we can see in this overview is the Oviraptor. So that's going to wrap up this very long video. Please, please comment your reactions to this down below so we can keep this discussion going. I'm very excited about this, as you can tell from this rambling video. Uh, but, you know, I hope that you find these sorts of videos fun to do. I just... I just, when I see stuff like this, I know you can look it up for yourself, but I just want to talk about it and talk about it with you. So that's what this is all about. Uh, again, leave a comment down below. If you did like this video, leave a like on your way out and subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. And I will see you for the next one. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time.